this is the last panel for this stage. So we have to make it the best one, obviously, right? So this is called Juggle Trouble, Finding and Keeping the Work-Life Balance. How many of us struggle with it? Of course. And you guys look so young, so I can't even <laughs> wait to tell you <laughs> what a bigger struggle is awaiting you, you guys. But, but right now we're going to talk about and hopefully come up with some answers about how we deal with work-life struggle as people who love our jobs but also love to rest sometimes. For this panel, uh, joining me is Janice Iquera, content creator and anchor of social media star with Janice. We love it. And Pooja Deegra, social media queen and founder and chef of La 15 Patisserie, who's using social media to her brand's advantage for years. Hello, ladies. Nice to see you. Of course, the chat show one will know. I don't want to say it, but we have to do one for Cam, I think. Right? Okay, so how are we doing, guys? There's a mic for you there. There's a mic for you there. Thanks, Pooj. Checking. Hi, guys. Hello. I was just here because these like bean bags are super comfortable, na? It's like, yeah. ke kaun <laughs> no, I, think, I, think, I think they sat down for a panel they were into and then they were like, this is it. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Done. It's totally okay. We were discussing, we're like, oh, that's exactly why you guys are here. These bean bags look hella, I mean, they look more comfortable than our chairs, let's be honest. Of course, and guys, you guys are not understanding. I'm five foot nothing. So these chairs are not even sort of comfortable for One me. One sec, I'm five foot eleven today. Okay, for no reason. God Show knows why off. I needed additional height. Show off. Okay, so we are talking about work-life balance. Are you the best people to talk about this? I don't think so. <laughs> So let's start with the obvious, guys. Pooja, what is your current work-life balance situation? And we're coming to you, Janice, after this. Okay, to be very honest, it's taken a very long time uh, to find some kind of what seems like a balance. Uh, when I started Love 15, I was 22, 23, so it was only about work. Friendships didn't matter. It only mattered what I was doing. And I think for the first three years, I needed to do that. Uh, now I can step back and say, okay, what is really important? What are the things I should say yes to? What are the things I should say no to? Um, so for me, saying no has become a very big part of my work-life balance. But currently, present day, on a scale of 1 to 10, where are you on your work-life balance? Pretty good. I'm here, no? Oh, that's not <laughs> <so> bad. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been stuck in my kitchen. Point to be noted, she doesn't think of this as work. Okay, Janice, moving on. This what isn't is, work, guys. This isn't work. Look what at is your... these chairs move. I'm very excited by the chairs. Sorry. Yeah, no, What is your ahead. current work-life balance situation? None. None at all? Absolutely none. I've, I don't think I've had any work-life balance since the time I started working. And it's something that I think I've started focusing on finally this year. Like I've started thinking about it. But I've started thinking about it this year. That okay. Like she said, right? The the thing is when you start working for yourself, na Priyam, what happens is suddenly you feel like every opportunity is an opportunity or much opportunity. But what you don't realize is after a period of time that actually there are enough opportunities to go around. So Say no. And say, than, say no very happily without thinking about who is going to come and take your spot because your spot is reserved for you irrespective. But more than the spot, do you think it kind of goes back to like, you know, when all of us start working fairly young in our lives, I think the three of us, this is common for... Yeah, what age did you start working? 22, 23. 22, ah, I started working around 20, straight out of college. Yeah, yeah, yeah straight out of college. So then I feel like, you know, so many times what you're doing for your job becomes weirdly attached to who you are. Like that's, you know, like, like anytime somebody would ask you what I do back in the day, I would just say like, yeah, I'm a journalist or, you know, like, huh. like you don't see yourself beyond your occupation is why I think your work-life balance because your work is life. Is that a struggle you guys have had also? Where you're attaching your self-worth to who you are professionally? Okay, wait, guys. I mean, I have to say this. I worked for Ornab Goswami for six and a half years. And lived okay. to tell the tale. Okay, <laughs> and lived to tell the tale. And not just worked for him. I was his entertainment editor, which means one of his HODs. So for those six and a half years, so I had what was work, what was life. It was all merging in between with my mother saying, please have some food. Don't forget to have that dabba or bring my Tupperware back. That's it. Okay, so... You're right, for a very long time and I till today I feel like even because after doing journalism for so many years, right, 
Then I transitioned also into doing talk shows and celebrity talk shows. So now also I have to go around explaining to people ki bhaiya main journalist nahi hu. No, no, don't be worried about what you say in front of me. Are you can have a cigarette in front of me? I don't give two shits. But I don't think it's now again. This year, guys, I'm sorry, 2023 actually, at the end of 2022 is the year that I've started being like, no, it's not all that I am. There is more to me than just being a celebrity talk show host or someone who creates content for a living or someone who's an ex-broadcast journalist. Usse bhi zyada hai, yaar, I have other things to talk about, really. I mean, look at me moving around in this chair, sorry. <laughs> of course, the chair, Pooja. <laughs> Uh, at, at what point, like, you know, did something happen in your professional, personal life? Doesn't have to be sad necessarily. Where you finally had to kind of, you know, kind of take rein of that. No, like, I cannot be killing myself over this and there is a balance that I need to start thinking about. You just decided it was sad. No, because I suddenly want to be like, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> no, I think for me, it was the start of COVID that actually showed me that you can get the same amount of work done without killing yourself. Yeah. Um, so for me, that was, it was just so much about spending time with yourself, taking things easy, and still being so productive and getting things done. Um, that I think that, that stayed with me even now that we've gone back to life as we knew it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so when you're in jobs that you love, because you, I feel like because you work for yourself, you're obviously making more choices than other no people. No problem, guys. You can go. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We won't call you out from stage at all. This is not a stand-up show. She says we, but she's solo in this adventure. I've, I've spent my whole day with them. So, you know, oh, I can't okay. be They're mean. like your homies yeah, now. Sorry, I, I, I apologize. You know, like, how I many it, of man. you guys feel like you have some sort of work-life balance? Yeah, most One of them One person? Know. One person. Ex oh, two person. That person <laughs> with the phone. Three persons. <laughs> Maybe, kind of. What is that? What is that? Okay, but, how do you... Okay, Priyam, we'll throw it to you now then. What would you define as work-life balance? So I was actually just coming to that, that I feel like for me, when you start working for yourself, you're thinking that, yeah, you know exactly, like all opportunity you must say yes to, but you're also working for yourself, so all your decisions are yours. And at some point I was like, I don't need to work this hard. Like, you know, <laughs> it's okay, I can live a little bit. I can sleep, I can go out on a date, I can just watch TV for multiple hours without like, you know, thinking that, oh shit, this productivity hour that I think all of us kind of, uh, you know, berate ourselves on. I think I was dealing with that a little bit. And then it kind of became like, I can relax, it's okay. The world is not revolving around me. And I think also what we don't realize in this work-life conversations, uh, work-life balance conversations, that a lot of workplaces kind of don't enable you or they don't equip you to have it. And you know, there's the, the toxicity at a workplace where this whole, Are, but we are like a family, which they don't, they confuse you are hiring not with adoption. part of their family. Yeah, They're so giving you a cupcake on Women's <laughs> Day. Exactly. You are not part of their not family. Part of their not family. even are from Law 15. Not even from Law 15. That's why I was, I was I, just going to say. I was, I just, but I, yeah, so I feel like when you realize that, oh, your workplace is not your family, so you don't have, to, you're not related by blood. Like they will replace you in a, in two days, if you were to drop dead, you know, like there are yeah, other roles yeah. in your life that, yeah. So, so, how, so what would you, what would you think is your advice to people who are dealing with just this toxic workplace where they think they don't have an option? So, okay, how many of you here are doing a corporate job right now? Wow, that's pretty much all of you. Okay, I want to tell you guys this. It's not Fuck worth it. Whatever they're telling you, it's not true. Okay. If you, they're going to make you feel like, oh God, the market is so bad right now. Tumko aur kaha par nokri milegi. Fuck that. If they're going to make you feel bad about the fact that your colleagues are working for 18 hours and you're only working for 11 hours. Fuck that. I'm telling you, I gave up that life and I gave up that life and it's been seven years. The first two, three years were really difficult getting back on your feet. But honestly, today I would not trade working for myself ever again, ever, ever again. I mean, guys, I was sitting and watching a Netflix show till 4 a.m. last night. Corporate job, me karke dikhao ye, please. Of course they do it. That's how they cope. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> how they cope with the not sleeping. Okay, but you know, like, as you talk to, like, more and more younger people, I do believe, and tell me if you agree, that the younger people do have it figured out a little more in a way that I don't think they are slogging in the way that we were meant to almost, you know, like if, if a work situation is not working, 
they bounce no yes yeah. I I also think it's it's a, it's a lot of course correction that happens through the generations, right? Like uh, in the sense, I feel like uh, my dad's generation or my granddad's generation, it was all about if a job gives you pension, you'll be loyal to that job and you'll stick there for 25, 30 years, and you'll just, you know. But as needs change and they'll be very proper, the company will take care of us. We'll be here for 30 years. We'll take care of the company. Us, we came to another stage where we're like, okay, as long as we'll put in the hours, uh, but it's not so much about, um, you know, as long as we make our money, it's fine. And I think the younger generation, it's not so much about the money, but it's more about a sense of purpose. And it's not about what are, it's, it's more about asking the organization, uh, why, why should I join you more than, more th and I see that, I see that a lot with young companies. So I think that just the, the, the narrative of, Work itself is changing. So then to find out, I think, I think this generation is very good with uh, laying boundaries yeah. of what is okay, what is not okay. I don't think us millennials, like I don't think we had that. You know, Anna, if I could just offer a piece of advice to everyone who's working in the corporate system specifically, or even if you're working for, whoever you're working for, right? Like, ask the pivotal questions about what your job really entails because I see this happen so often that it's like, oh, they've given you a fancy post. They might even offer you great amounts of money. But then you go in and you realize ki, oh, mujhko to bola tha marketing karna hai, but marketing ke saath bhi sales bhi karo. Sales ke saath ye bhi karo, ja ke ye brand se bhi milo, ye bhi karo, wo bhi karo. And ultimately then you're like, bro, but I just signed up for one position, but tumne to donkey ki tarah das kaam kara liye. Which by the way, Till 10 years ago, we were doing. Hi, Sejal. Guys, that's Sejal. Yeah, she was hello. here right before you. <laughs> she, was she was on stage with her before. It's okay. So you all know already. But I'm saying like, be very clear about what you will do, your, your scope of work, what your deliverables are and what you expect from the company. Because I feel like, and like even when we're now hiring in our teams, I think that communication is so important. Like put it down that, okay, if I'm, for example, if I'm hiring someone to help me with my social media, right? So I will say, okay, these many reels, be there when I have to shoot, pictures, editing on time, vagera, vagera, let's make a schedule. And then I would really appreciate if that person also was transparent and said, but Janice, I don't think this is, you know, my area of comfort or this is not something I can do and I don't want to work X, Y, Z days, I need certain days off. That kind of transparency, I think, would really help well with this generation because like she said, we are the donkey generation. Or our parents so also bhi zyada donkey generation. But this generation, I feel like, can change that. At least that. like vocalizing, like the problems they're facing. Be very the clear. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Pooja, we'll start with you, especially right now in your career. Are there any active measures or steps you're taking, not on a daily basis, on a regular basis, for you to ensure that you're not going crazy at work? Uh, and you're bringing that balance back into your life constantly. I think when you own your own business, there's very, you know, you're constantly think. It's very difficult to disconnect from. I could be at home and still working on a recipe or thinking of something with marketing or concerned about something. So I think it never stops. But what I try to do is physically just take myself out of work. So I leave the kitchen or the office by 6.30 and that for me is a big step because I used to be there till 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 if I needed to be. Um, so I work very decent hours now. I go in in the morning by 8, by 5.36 I'm out. And then if I'm needed, I'm always available. But after 12 years, I can do this now. Yeah. Okay, so my new thing is that I think um, in the last four or five years, I was so hell-bent on... Like it was almost like a personal mission for me to make social media star with Janice something to be reckoned with. And no matter how many people or how many views kept coming, I kept thinking it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough. And then I think somewhere around the third season that thinking changed and uh, subtle plug, but that was also our most successful season yet. <laughs> Sorry, the Amazon season, I'll say it out loud. But I think that's when I realized that also what I'm missing is if I'm only all the time focused on work, focused on editing, focused on who else do I cast for the show, who can I get next, what next IP can I create, I'm forgetting to have fun. And I feel like we all started working for ourselves because yeah. it was more fun than working for a corporation or working for someone else. So I'm going back to doing the things 
which not only made me fun in the workplace, but also made me fun as a person. So I've like rediscovered going out on weekends and partying. Like Ooh, my friends, I'm having, a, for yeah, yeah, I'm having a full midlife crisis. My friends are going like, you were out till what time last night? And you did what? I've become that person because I've realized that it's also changing how I'm interviewing people. I like talking to people. I like meeting random people. I'll be weird for all of one minute and then I'll behave like I've known you for 50 years. Not, I'm not 50 old, 50 years old. What am I saying? But you get what I'm saying, right? So that's been my, like I have to now take that time out to go do things I enjoy. Whether it's having a drink with friends, trying out a new restaurant, just going back to being fun Janice. Yes, fun Janice, we fun are here fun for it. Fun Janice? Sounds wrong. Okay. I think, we I should, think for me, I think we should stop talking. <laughs> stop. I think for me what now, I think doing? I'm at a point where when I'm being too hectic and slowly losing balance, at least now, like you said, like that awareness has come. Ki, okay, Priyam, you can relax a little. Take a short chee, na? Basically, tabi, ha? Yega short chee, na? Sharab ki baate on work stages, stop it. But okay, I've got. Don't sharab ni pizza ya pe. Put your hand up. Oh, one person. You are not legal yet. That's why you can't drink sharab. Officially, Two people. That's officially. it. Officially. Okay, do we have any questions for the ladies of the audience? Anybody? Tips and tricks? Yes. Can we give her a mic, please? Yeah, we can hear you. A mic's coming. I'm feeling like singing a song. <laughs> Janice, please. Is it going to be about yeah, a chair? Are you good? Are you a good singer? I am a decent oh, singer. Oh, then sing. No, absolutely not. No, now you may be full conscious. Yes, come Hi. on. Absolutely not. Janice joke, wants guys. to sing a song, no, guys. guys. That was a joke. No, that's, a, that's a conclusion Ooh. song. We listened this is to such a bad song also, guys. Which and one? I was listening to this new Ranbir and Shraddha song. Oh, Please God. sing it. You have okay, to. Okay, question and then song. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hi, Janice. You're looking lovely. like your Hi. outfit. Um, you up and drink. Oh, yes. I didn't notice that. So, I would like to start with saying that this is a much required session, which is why we are not ducking red flags and we are sitting here. So, you got the captive audience. What's your name? What's your name? Minakshi. Love. Minakshi. Minakshi? Three cheers for Minakshi. Oh, Thank you. One cheer. Thank I can't you. do that much noise also. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here's a question to the both of you. What is that one step when you know, okay, this is going to hit me a little hard, but I have to stop myself here? And just push yourself, that little thing that you need to tell in your head. Because I've been trying to do that, and I just like push myself. But the next day, I'm opening my mails at 4 a.m. and reading. So how do you just cut yourself from that? Any advice, any tips? I think that's a question that most of us would have. OK, so in therapy, uh, because I was dealing with this 4 a.m. nonsense as well. And I'm one of, I don't know, I, I feel like the world is divided into two kinds of people. People who can have like hundreds of unread chats and hundreds of unread emails and people who can't. 000. I can't. I will read spam, you guys. I swear. I'm not, I'm like, I spam bhi nikalna hai. <laughs> But so in therapy, I started sort of like, you know, telling myself two, three things. One is draw a, like a very clear timeline of when you will work and when you will not. So come what may, unless it's an emergency and my team says, Janice, no, we need an approval or we need you to respond to this right now. I will stop looking at all work-related things by 11 or 12. Jayashree sitting right then, she's like, she's lying. She sometimes messages at 3 in the morning also. But, 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 okay. but mostly emails and like stuff that I feel like I really need to put some thought into, I will not do it post, say, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. The second thing is, and I don't know, again, therapy. When I'm in a situation where I'm like, okay, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? I divide it into two columns. What is in my control and what is not in my control? Everything that is in my control, I will try and fix, I will try and do. Whatever is not in my control, I will just tell myself, fuck it, let it go, universe mein jai, bhaad mein jai. Jo hona hai, ho jayega. So these are the two things, I don't know if they help, but one is that I stop responding after a certain time and then what you can control versus what you cannot. And just to add to that, I feel like any sort of boundary setting in any aspect of your life, especially professionally, have to come from yourself. So if you've decided that 6 o'clock you're bouncing, 
bouts. Do it. Do it day one, do it day five, by day six. It'll not seem so unnatural. But also, if you feel like you're responsible for something, just... And this is only in an exceptional case, not in an everyday case. If you feel like something is riding on your approval or something is... Or a whole chain of people are going to get held up because you don't respond on time, take that responsibility of, also seriously. Don't be a dick achieving your work-life <laughs> balance. <laughs> yeah. But try to achieve it. Because yeah, that questions? has happened as well. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Yes. Hi. Uh, so, uh, I have a question. Like, uh, how do you set your goals? Like, I set my goals and I achieve it. And I have a good work-life balance. But then I think I don't hustle. And, you know, I'm setting small goals. We should be asking you questions. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I... <laughs> like, I, I set my goals, I achieve them. I have work-life balance. <laughs> no, I mean... But my problem is... <laughs> no, my problem is, I think I underestimate myself. I, I set small goals. So, like, should we set bigger goals and, you know, work for it? Pooch should answer this because, honestly, this woman has taken that chotu macaroon and made sure every person in this country knows what it is. So, Pooj, you, you talk about this. Um, I think it depends. So, what I like to do is I like to set goals uh, for myself personally every year. So, I set one big goal for the whole year and then I spend the whole year working on it. And then, uh, so that things like it could be like running half marathon or dancing on stage, literally random. Uh, speaking French in front of 5,000 French people, like I did that in, in three years ago. Woohoo! So, in front of the world's biggest chefs, guys! So I, I, I kind of put myself in these spots. So that's my like really big, hairy, audacious goal that I have for the year for myself. And then I work towards that. Uh, but I think you kind of know in your, in your heart what kind of goal you're setting. And if you feel that it's too small and you've achieved it too easily, then the next one you set can be a little harder. And the next one you set can, be, can challenge yourself a little more. Uh, because you're saying you're achieving them, that is great because everyone likes to feel like a winner, right? Once you keep winning, then you, that, that becomes your sort of mantra and you win a lot more. Um, so actually what you're doing is great. Starting small and then slowly, slowly adding, slowly adding, pushing the boundary little by little. Yeah. Also, the other part you said about underestimating yourself. I mean, I don't know whether this is true for the two of you, but I feel like at some level all of us are dealing with imposter syndrome. Yeah. Where we feel like, nay yaar, why am I the right person for this job? Mm. Or why am I getting this opportunity? Someone else could be better. Or, oh my God, they're going to realize I'm terrible at what I do and it was all a fluke. That's everyone. So my point is that getting over that, you know, underestimation or, you know, getting over that confidence bump mm. is honestly in your head. If you're achieving your small goals, like she said, it's time now to start Thoda, 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 thoda karke and like she said, great idea. Yeah. Ek saal mein ek bada goal and multiple chote goals. But I would just like to add to everything they're saying to say that I think at some point we get very influenced by what our goal sheet is looking in comparison to somebody else's, right? And if your goal is quote unquote small, it's fine. You know what I'm saying? You know, everybody doesn't have to do the hard job. Everybody doesn't have to hustle and kill themselves. If you're happy doing maybe a little less as in comparison to somebody else, but you're being able to achieve those goals, you're feeling like you're maintaining a work-life balance, you're doing the best that you want to do, it's keeping you creatively stimulated, it's fine. You know, don't compare your goal sheet to somebody else's because somebody might want to climb Mount Everest and that's amazing for them. And I just might want to look at the tree and chill and that's also <laughs> a goal that's good enough, you know. My I goal was going is to just to climb Mount Everest. Fuji. <laughs> Mount Fuji, okay, all the best to you for that. And of and course, overachiever will achieve it. No, no, she will pakka achieve it. Jaake matlab French, what, the world's biggest pastry chefs? It's, oh, okay, okay, I'm not supposed to do your PR over here. Oh, you won't send my check now, shit. <laughs> okay, Jaake, any other questions from the audience? Otherwise, we'll wrap this up. No? Oh, yeah, yeah, Janice's song. Oh, We're waiting yeah. for Janice's song and then we can wrap this up. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, that's a question. Can you give her the mic, please, someone? Can you pass the mic? Hi, guys. Uh, so, I've been working in the creative field for 13 years. I am my worst enemy because even if my boss says, Are, ho gaya, de do client ko de I'm like, Nahi, yaar, thoda aur karna hai, thoda aur karna hai. 
थोड़ा और करना है काम काम जाने Where are you work? You work? Sh- no. jobs? <laughs> I did not not go there at all. Not okay. calm, calm. <laughs> so, so how do we we get creatively satisfied where we say this is enough? You know, I keep telling myself ki, you know, maybe I will put extra hours off the office hours. I am sitting just to satisfy myself. So how do we get draw that line over there? Are you talking about being more creative? Are you like talking how about how do stop, I not? How do we? How do I no, stop my own? I think what brain? she's asking, I, I might have an answer to that. Mm-hmm. Basically, when you're especially in a creative profession, you cannot, unfortunately, you cannot chase perfection. You can't do it, yeah. right? You have to kind of focus on good enough because the thing is, because in a creative profession, your whole idea is your mind, right? Like you have to keep polishing your mind, you have to keep showing up for yourself creatively. So the pursuit of perfection, you're already setting yourself up for failure. You have to keep producing, doing, understanding that good enough is also sometimes okay and that you will have to repeat constantly. I might disagree because hello, we have... uh I mean, I don't think Pooch would ever be okay with giving us just a good enough cake if it's exactly, not perfect, right? right? Or like just a, like if it's a flat macaron, are you really no, going to? No, of course, but a flat I'm macaron kidding. is not good enough, right? I'm saying it depends on the line of work that you're in, right? See, like also, it's like when you go in to watch a film. Some films unanimously everyone likes. Some films you go in and some people like them and some people don't. Now it depends on, it's a very subjective thing when you're talking about creativity. So I agree with her that if it's about like, oh, how do I set, satisfy my creative goals? Buddy, I have looked at the same edit 20 times and then gone back and to the first edit and said, yehi wala theek tha. Exactly, because that process will never end. You yeah. will always feel I'll like always this feel can like, be oh, better. I could, I could get a better laugh from here. Bilkul, I could get a better bilkul. moment bilkul. from here. But then if it's something like creating a product, or creating maybe something that people are going to buy as a service and use it. Then, of course, I mean, Pooj, if you want to throw light on how do you perfect that? I mean, I think it comes down, for me, it's about setting processes to reach uh, how do you make creativity a process as well, which kind of sucks out most of the fun out of it. But you have to, right? At least for us, we know we have so many menus in the year and we have to be, you know, so that's when actual creativity comes in. So I just try to make it a process and be like, okay, if um, me and six people in the office who I've selected are happy with something, I don't overthink it. I think we we become our own enemies with this overthinking. And I think this, you need to just set guidelines and if it fits in there, you have to say, this is good. And she also has many people who are very happy to taste and be like, yeah, please send us free samples. We will taste and tell you if we love it or like it. Okay, thank you so much for attending. Thank, thank, you, thank you for giving thank us so you. many tips for work-life balance. And hopefully this is the year we maintain more and more of it, right? Ghanta, we'll probably be back next year and be like, Stop oh, it, Janice. did not happen. We leave with hope. We leave with hope. Thank you, guys. You guys have been amazing.